I'm Elaine Sims. I'm on the campus of St. Catharines College in the Emily W. Hunley Library. Uh, this is December. Uh, we're at the end of the semester. And I have with me Joanne Weiss, who in October opened an exhibit here an art for, for the, as part of the Fine Arts Department in the Berry Program. And Joanne is a textile, this, she's exhibiting her textile art. Uh, Joanne, there's so much great information that you can share with our audience about who you are and where you came from. It's, it's very interesting. Basically, I am a retired social worker. And the way that I got into the art probably goes back to when I was in high school. Um, I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island. Rhode Island School of Design is one of the best uh, art programs in the country. And I had sort of a dream of going there. Life forces changed and I ended up uh, actually having a wonderful career in the social services. My husband is from Louisville, so that's how I ended up in the Kentucky. But uh, through the years, I always looked for opportunities to make art, whether it was doing costuming or set designs for my daughter, uh, who was pretty much into music and drama, or just doing volunteer activity with my son's Cub Scout troop where I actually discovered my real affinity for working with textiles on this scale was uh, one of the things I did to keep in touch with my art was made banners for our church. Uh, when, through the years as I was making those banners, I, I really enjoyed it and started, even though I was working full time, as the children got older, I started uh, taking classes in art departments, whether it was a community college and eventually at uh, the University of Louisville in the fiber department. As I began moving towards retirement, uh, I actually registered at the University of Louisville. And since I retired, I got my master's degree in fine arts uh, with a focus on fiber from U of L. So now, instead of being a social worker who does art on the side, I'm an artist and I continue to stay somewhat involved with some of the programs uh, as a volunteer or on boards, but now I'm an artist. So that's sort of my, how I got into what I'm doing here. Have you done other projects where you had exhibits before now? I've been exhibiting for a number of years. Um, probably the very first time I ever showed in public was an invitation to participate in a, in a show that was at the cathedral in Louisville where artists were invited to make art using elements from the pre-Civil War bell tower that they were renovating. So I made a piece that showed in public. I used the copper and the marble and the wood from the actual bell tower. That was the very first time I ever showed publicly. That was a little bit scary. Um, but since then, I've shown either be juried into a show uh, on a single person basis or, or, or have one or two or three person shows um, in various places around the state. Um, the Water Tower, um, Spalding University, gallery so um, I, I show regularly and you're here at St. Catharines as part of the fine arts department but also because of the influence of Wendell, Wendell Berry. Berry right uh, what what did he mean to you for you to develop this project around him and for, his works for I, I tend to work in a series at least three pieces three to six pieces uh, at a time based on a certain theme or element or subject matter. Probably four or five years ago, I started uh, developing an interest and the theme that I was, themes that I was exploring had to do with the environment, with what's happening to our world, either celebrating things that we are doing well or expressing concern for uh, some of what we're doing that's destroying. Our, our environment. One of the shows that I was involved with along those lines was at the uh, Water Tower that was the, at that time, the gallery for the Louisville Visual Art Association. And the theme for that show was the Ohio River. So I did a series of pieces focused on the Ohio River. But one of the other things I do as I'm developing a concept is I research the subject matter. In researching things about the Ohio River, I learned an amazing number of facts, like where the word Ohio came from, how many places pollution is dumped into the river. I mean, that whole range of, of facts. And for that show, I felt those 
facts. That information was so much a part of the show, I actually made a book. I did a handmade book that included all of the information, or as much of the information as I learned about the Ohio River as I could fit into this small book. It was so disjointed, like I said, going from the Native American use of the river to what's happening now. I needed something to pull it together. I searched and I found one of Wendell Berry's Sabbath poems that perfectly said what it is that I wanted that book to represent. So I wrote to him and I got permission to include that particular poem uh, in my book. And that was then part of the show at the Water Tower. Mm -hmm. That also was sort of my realization that what Wendell Berry was saying with words is what I was trying to communicate with my, my textile art, my visuals. So with that, I, I began reading some of his both prose and poetry, especially if I was really beginning to look into a, a series, look into or research a subject matter. Because the other thing that's also important to me is to when I'm researching, I'm not just looking at the facts. I really want to make a spiritual link uh, with, with whatever it is that, that's occurring. So I had f just finished a series. I had just been part of a show um, where the focus was the Floyd's Fork, which is uh, right. an area in Jefferson right. County. It's my neighborhood. I live in the watershed for the Floyd's Fork. So that was just a, a very full and demanding series. I had the show, it was over, and when I'm finished with the series, I tend to, okay, now I'm gonna rest, clean up my studio, catch up on housework or whatever has been missed, but then I begin to get itchy. What is the next series gonna be? And I wasn't quite there yet. What is the next series gonna be? When I saw a small blurb in uh, the record newspaper about St. Catherine College, was going to now be the home of the Wendell Berry Program for Sustainable Agriculture. And it was, da-da, that's it. That's my next Wonderful. series, if I, I can um, make it happen. Leah's name, Dr. Leah Baines is the director of that program. Leah's name was in the article. We had never met. So I emailed her, introduced myself, and said, would you entertain a proposal? And she very graciously got back to me within a day or two. And then with her, and then Betty Brookfield is the uh, chair of the art department. Right. And then Alona Burdett here at the library. Um, and of course the president, President Houston. Everybody really just has been so supportive. The library wasn't finished, but we knew this is where the show was going to be. So I just started working on this probably in the spring of this year. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, because it's been about a it's year we've been working on it. Wow. And it took a while to, well, as a matter of fact, I mean, you, you, you know, this, the work of creating the art is almost quick when most of my energy and time is put into the thinking it through to decide what is the subject matter going to be? What is the color? What is the palette? What are the facts I want to communicate? What is the feeling I want to convey? Um, so a lot of times that, by the time I get there, what, what techniques am I going to use? Mm -hmm. By the time I get there, I pretty much have the pieces laid out. And, and that is almost quicker than the actual getting ready to do it. So when you did this project, it, it, the, there's a wonderful program here. I'm sure they're available here on campus in, in the library. Mm -hmm. Did you focus on one poem? Did you think about what you wanted to do and look for the wording? Or did you focus on a poem and then create your piece? No, I, I, I did the pieces first because there was so much of Barry's writing that, that addressed each of these issues. Okay. So I chose the subject matter and it fell very conveniently into six pieces. I wasn't sure that what size wall I would have or what space I would have, and six is perfect for this wall. It's perfect. So it meant it to is. happen that I would, that, so I, there, were, there were six areas that, that I felt needed to be explored with my art. Um, and after the fact, then I honed in on particular quotes, poems, and prose. Okay. Because each of them had a number of, of, of um, elements of Wendell Berry's writings that addressed them. So I, I, it wasn't that I made these and then went out and scrambled to find words to match. Right. I honed in on the ones that I felt were most uh, linked to each of the pieces. Okay. Let's, uh, let's start and look at these. Uh, 
and I think I think we need to go through each one. I'm not real sure how close the camera can get to uh, pollination frenzy. Let's Pollina talk about this. Um, well, I'll talk about the meaning to you first, and then let's talk about a little bit about the technique. How about that? Uh, pollination frenzy, one of the major concerns that I think we are facing has to do with the genetically modified um, agriculture, the GMO. And because I, we're discovering a lot now that is very destructive in, in what's happening with, with the uh, reproduction of plants. So with this, I basically wanted to go back and represent what happens in nature when nature itself is, is the one that does the seeding. Whether we are, as farmers are collecting the seeds and saving them and then planting, or it's just the natural pollination, that's what I'm basically portraying here. Um, the seed head, the stitches are representing the seeds just falling. The screens that I, I make my own silk screens, and the screens in the back here represent bees' wings. You know, I actually draw drew the oh, wings of the bees. Sure, sure. Um, and then flower heads, just dropping seeds into the ground. So the brown down here is representing just the earth. So everything here is just pollination, just seeds falling to the earth, taking hold and beginning to shoot up. The text in the background on this, my husband's great-great-grandfather was um, a farmer in Spencer County. And between 1860 and 1864, he hand wrote a journal. So I have a copy, we have a copy of that journal. So the quotes in three of these pieces, the text, are actual copies written in the 1860s by a farmer here in Spencer County talking about the harvest of peaches, the planting of corns, the going to Louisville to buy a cider mill. So that's what we've, we've, we're honoring here, the, the roots taking hold, the seeds dropping, the roots, the beginning of growth. It's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so the different techniques, you made your own silk screen, the seeds right. are, are dot, well, knots. Dots of thread, French French knots, French, French knots, French which knots I learned to do that. Because, yes, well, I did that smocking. Okay, um, and of course the leaves, the stitching is right. beautiful. Right. the coloring, um, the the threads. There are threads that are on top of the fabric. Mm -hmm. I'm so sure that I guess that you stitched in there. Right, right. It, it's all of it's my really beautiful. My fabric, all of this fabrics, anything I work with starts white. Whatever the fabric is, it starts white, and it's a natural fiber. Uh, because the dyes that I use only respond to natural fiber. One of the delays in starting this program, this, this series, I felt strongly that the fabric that I needed to use was hemp, just because I, I believe that is a natural mm -hmm. plant for Kentucky. Yes. And it's very easy to get the coarse weave hemp, but I needed a fine weave hemp to get the screening. And to find the source of that was really a challenge. You know, because it's all coming in from out of, the, out of the country. And the finest weave, I found two or three suppliers, one in Seattle, one in Denver. Um, it's sold before it gets into the States. So this is really the second level, the second finest weave of the hemp. Well, and if people get to come and see the, 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 the exhibit, you'll uh -huh. see it looks very much like linen. Very yeah, much like yeah, linen. Yeah, yeah. And you know, 15 years ago, you saw hemp clothes, which right. you don't see them now right, much. Right, you mean? right. And it may be something that will come back. I don't know. I don't know if the process of, of producing the fa fabric out of the fiber is. But I think is, agriculturally, uh, hemp would yeah, be a yeah. good crop for Kentucky. Okay. If able to get through the technicals. If you, that's right. Well, yeah. they're trying. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't say we, but they, they're certainly trying. Um, th this, the second piece is called abundance. abundance okay you can tell us about this piece well again abundance is the harvest um, just what is it that 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 comes to us from the from the land and i've tried to represent you know the vegetables the honey from the bees the the eggs the just a whole range of of um, pieces. Now, of all of the pieces, this one may have been more inspired by a particular poem of Wendell Berry's, um, Grace. 
oh. where he talks about uh, just the colors of the earth. So the text here is actually my handwritten version of his poem, uh, Grace, just written onto the hemp and then adhered to the piece itself. I really would advise people, uh, how long is the exhibit going to be here? Until the spring. There I really is. would advise people to take a day, to come down and have coffee, a snappy tomato, and then to come up here and read the brochure and examine these because every time that I have exposed myself to them, I've gotten more out of them. And it does help you to understand Wendell Berry. It yes, understands yeah, what, yeah. And, and to read his poems, yeah. it, it makes it much yeah. easier to read his poems with this interpretation because they need to be read slowly and you have to think yes, you know, yeah. well as you should yeah. with everything. Yeah. But really think about the message he was bringing and how many lives he has touched by what he's written. And he has. He has touched a number of lives. Uh, it's interesting because, again, I'm not from this part of the country. So as I have ex you know, expressed to um, my family and friends up in New England and others that I know around the country, uh, just through my art connections, people know Wendell Berry. I mean, and what he stands for is, is broadly recognized. So for me, this was really a privilege. And the fact that St. Catherine's actually has this program that focuses on his teachings um, or his principles, the principles that he promotes, not necessarily his principles, but um, is, is really a gift to the community. It is. And I think it's been very hard for many of the people that don't come to St. Catherine's or uh, to understand what this is all about. Yeah. This definitely... Yeah. I mean, the, the library is a very quiet, silent place. It's very warm and welcoming, and this is just up on the second level. I hope yeah. that people will come to look at this. Well, I hope this exposure it, it helps to bring people in to to see this, to um, so they can embrace this. What, when, you know how lucky we are to have this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, next, the family farm. Family farm. Uh, one of the things that you'll see, he read a lot in Barry's writings, both the poetry and and the prose has to do with returning to the family farm. Not necessarily the old farm as we knew it a century ago, but just, and, and he has some very clear definitions of what constitutes, what makes a family farm. One of the things um, that I, or a couple of the things that I identified with as he defines family farm, is that a farm that has a variety of crops, because one of the things that we do or have tended to do is destroy the soil just through repetitive planting of the same. I don't understand it. I'm not an agriculturist. I could read what he was talking about and could truly, truly, truly sense it. Um, and then the other thing too is just the, the sense of family taking root. Oh. So these um, basically are representing the idea of a family actually beginning to take hold of, of the earth that they farm. Again, the t quotes here are from the great-great-grandfather's okay, journal. Okay, as I was going to ask you that. And it was very interesting. The night of the opening, um, a f gentleman that I've known for a number of years was so moved by this particular piece. He pulled me aside, and he told me the story of his growing up um, relatively poor uh, in Iowa and his family being forced to move from town to a dilapidated farm on the outskirts of town where the ground was so sterile that nothing grew. The, um, and his family, basically, just through these practices, rejuvenated the ground, and that became his family homestead. They still think of it as home. Mm -hmm. And this piece said so much to him about that. Um, That's why. He had never, we had, uh, over the years, like I said, as we'd known each other, I didn't know that part of his story, but he was very, very moved. And I think that, for me, is exactly why I do what I do, yeah, is that's, to that's, have that's somebody, amazing. have it speak to somebody. Well, and the people locally that were on the Bill Moyer special when was the, as part of the uh, program that was aired on the conference here mm -hmm. uh, are doing exactly that, Martha and Boss Young. Right. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're taking the, he showed the worms that yeah. he was waiting yeah. to come back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they, it, this speaks, I'm sure, so much to yeah. them. And there were so many people here that day. I hope that they, uh, I'm, I may mention to both of them again so they can come back and examine this piece. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. Now, as opposed to the family farm, you've got the factory farm. And again, oh, Barry does a lot of writing about the factory farm. Um, 
One of the parts of the country that really, really concerns me is that whole Delmarva Peninsula and, and just what's happening with chicken farms. Um, so this is sort of representing at least one aspect of the industrial farm, um, the poultry farm, which is... Okay. You know, we'll, yeah. You, you can read about it. Yeah, well. And even though I don't necessarily do things that I think are, are political posters or statements, there's nothing, I couldn't think of another symbol more than that red X, you know, okay, just I get I was rid gonna, of, yeah, the, you know, yeah. the, the, these huge factory farms. Now, the single healthy egg is there to represent that what we're beginning to discover, I believe, you know, that, that we do need to return to the basics, um, even in, in, the, in the, the livestock farming. Um, there was an, I just heard an interesting interview yesterday on NPR when I was driving somewhere about the different taste even between the farm fresh eggs and mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the factory produced eggs because of the whole urban chicken thing that's going on. You know, a lot of young people are just now bringing chickens into their backyards in the they larger are. cities. And, and one of, I mean, they name their chickens and they, <laughs> they can't eat them, <laughs> but they love the eggs. Yes, you know? So that yes, was just, yes. I, and just to hear that kind of conversation which was not part of my thinking as I put this together, but it just sort of reaffirms where I went with my thinking. They all look alike, a lot of work, and of course a lot of creativity. You have a lot of chickens on this page, <laughs> a lot. There's a lot of chickens in these farms, but what the, the, the technique is really pretty easy. I um, just drew a, a bunch of chickens, and then I made a screen, a small silk screen, okay, okay. and then I just repeated that silk screen, and over I can flip and it and do it the other way, okay. so I didn't draw, I didn't make all of those chickens. It's now just see, and I, that day I was here, I did not catch this piece, but I went through it so quickly, and, okay. you know, but, but to examine this piece, I don't think it really takes reading or, or trying to find an art of information about how chickens are being uh, supplied to the United mm -hmm. States, because I think people just have to go to their market and yeah, they were pretty much understand. It's it's done in mass. Yeah, mass. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. it's so accessible. Yeah, yeah, and huge, yeah. huge chickens. Yeah, now great big chickens. So that's that's one. And again, the text there is the journal from okay. my great, great grandfather. Well, see, I'm learning as much as as our, as our audience. This is the first piece that caught my eye when I came here. But gosh, now that we've talked about them all, it's going to be hard. But this was kind of one the one that that I leaned toward. Um, the home cooked meal, mm -hmm. which having a family of six children know oh. that that is the most important time of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the time that you even after the plates are gone that you sit around the table yeah. Yeah. and share, yeah. you know, yeah. your life. Yeah. So uh, your inspiration for this and how you interpret it, it's, it's great. Well, I think, you know, when you read Wendell Berry, in fact, um, in the recent compendium of, all, of a lot of, a collection of a lot of his writings, um, he's, he acknowledges that he has not written a lot about eating. Uh, so he actually has a whole section in the back that's just about eating. But I think his one statement that is so classic is, is eating as an agricultural act was, I, I had to have the meal in there. I mean, just eating is, is just part of what happens with good food. And the um, dinner table, I just needed to set a table is what I needed to do. So I set the table. Um, and I just scattered it with a lot of the screens I had made for all of the other pieces. You know, there were no screens that were made new for this. So the vegetables that you see here are oh, also in the okay. other, okay. you know, in all the other pieces. So everything kind of gathers here. The text on this is very special, I think, also. A group of friends, um, I was telling them about this idea uh, before it ever became real, and had this idea uh, about collecting recipes, putting recipes down there. So they started offering to send me copies of their old family recipes. Oh. So these are screens that I made. The new screens that I made for this piece are the reproductions of the recipes that my friends gave me, some even in the hands. This is my friend's grandmother's handwriting. Oh, Gertrude. Uh, this is my mother's handwriting oh, with the Irish, Irish bread, bread that, that my family always made. It was, it was our four by four bread. It was four cups of this and four tablespoons of that and four tablespoons of this and throw it in the oven and it'll be here. It'll be ready by the time they get here. I copy that for 
that's yeah, that's okay. pretty cool. Yeah. So so the recipes there are all very special to the people. Butternut squash. I mean, it's amazing because the recipes are things that we see. Uh, uh, potato soup. Uh huh. It's just that's it. Yeah. It's what goes around comes around. Yes. But I mean, yeah. you you can never go wrong with and corn pudding. Yes, that's corn there. Corn pudding. Yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. The color, the blue is the splash of that. I mean, but but to also to understand that all of this, everything else came feeds into this. Feeds into this. Literally, the dinner table. <laughs> yeah, the dinner table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ultimately that's where it all comes yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, comes together as an agricultural beautiful. act. And as, as an a agricultural act. act. Beautiful. Okay, let's move down here to the last one. One of the things that Barry talks about very specifically is that yes, it's nice to talk about good food and good farming, and but it also needs to have an income. You need to be able to support the people that are creating and producing this food for us. So market is also important. You know, sustainability has to do with the economics of a family supporting themselves. So this is to market to market. Um, the Screens in the back here, actually screens uh, that I made from photographs I took at one of the farmer's markets that we use, that we go to regularly. Oh. Um, and, and some of them are funny. Um, it, raw live sauerkraut. Now, I don't know what raw live <laughs> sauerkraut is. It's still fermenting. It's still fermenting. <laughs> yeah, and he still sells it. That's a sign. Um, <laughs> so, so I just went around and took photographs of the signs at one of the farmer's markets and created screens from them. And then... Um, yeah, I see that there's... Yeah, so when you pull it up, there you see the rest yeah, of the text. Yeah. But, oh. And I felt, you know, this I, I kind of put loose like this because I think that... Um, symbolizes or, or sort of visualizes that you're going to take it up and carry it off. Carry it off. Uh, with you. I also put music here because some of the farmer's markets, at least in Louisville, we, you know, where we frequent, there's almost always, always, always there music. just drumming. Yes. Um, yes. And that has become part of yes. uh, the, the Saturday morning or the Tuesday afternoon ritual is to just yeah. go, who's playing this weekend? And that's entertainment within itself yeah. just to go to yes. the market. Yeah. Just yeah. even yeah. have a cup oh, of coffee and yeah. walk around. Yeah, yeah. And, and have a big omelet that somebody made. Yes, yes, yeah. yes it is. Yeah. And we have a local farmer's market. And actually, I understand we have a new store that uh, is selling produce through the... Yes, in, yeah, in, uh, and, and we're seeing a lot of that, and I think that's... That's wonderful. And as much... If people talk about how much more expensive it is. If you actually price it out, I mean, because that's another part of it, is that you do need to support the farmers, number one, but you're also starting with good raw product rather than, you know, purchasing the, the process. Yes, yes. And so if you price it out and you're really using these products, you're... It's it's yeah. an it's an economy as well as fun, right? And right. does taste good. <laughs> and if they want to, you know, I think if you go the, through the process of raising your own some of your own mm -hmm, vegetables, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. I do a small raised gardens. Yeah, we do too. But mm -hmm. um, it's so valuable to me. I don't know if I could sell it, but if I did, it would not be, you know, at some of the market prices in the summer inside oh, okay. the grocery okay. stores oh, when they yeah. have their super yeah. sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, no. no. You, you don't I'm not do that. Doing that. But no. You taste a tomato in winter, and you know that yeah. it's not. I have tomatoes place. from think. I still have tomatoes from the summer that I have that are turning red. So we always have them till Thanksgiving. Okay. So it's pretty cool Good for you. Well, it's you know I, I know the again we're in the upper space of, of, of the of the library here at St. Catharines. There's programs here on the table. Um, it will be here until March. Exhibit will I be think here until into March. spring. Till at spring. Least. Till yes, spring. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, it's a lovely area. People can come and also sit down and read a book and, and, and just absorb this and visit it. There's food, drink available yeah, and there's in the a basement. Lot to do. I mean, you know, my friends, I invited my friends from Louisville to the couple of events that we've had here. So make sure you come down. Just have a nice lunch, you know, in Springfield, Bardstown, any of the towns down here. Enjoy the countryside and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. go back refreshed. And, and I think that's pretty much the feedback I've gotten from the people that have come you know, from, from Louisville. Yeah. And so, the view from here yeah. is just wonderful yeah. of the campus. It's a wonderful facility. Do you have any idea what you're going to do next? Do you, have you begun to think about that, or you already started it? I, well, I'm, I'm, as I got into some of this, one of the things that has really struck me is that the whole um, world of heirloom seeds and vegetables, just the heritage uh, seed. So I'm Doing the research, I'm even beginning now to do some of the design work, and I think I'll do a series on heritage seeds. Yeah, 
And a lot of people are beginning to, uh, you know, take the that into, yes, yeah. doing the heirloom. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah. Do, yeah. And, uh, and yeah. I, I remember buying seeds of Colonial Williamsburg and Charlotte's in, yeah. Yeah. at uh, Monticello, heirloom yeah. seeds. Yeah, 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 where they, they because there they're actually doing serious research. Yes, yeah. Uh, in both those places. You know, and it's a challenge, and it's, you know, it's fun, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't yeah. always succeed, but the, you can always try again the next but year. they taste so good. Yes, they do. They do yes, taste so they, good. Thank you so much for being here today, again, on well, campus. Thank you. And it's wonderful thank to you. offer this to our audience and to invite them to come to St. Catharines, come to the library. There's, they won't, It wouldn't mm -hmm. be hard to find parking here. No. It may not be no. the closest place because of all the students on campus. But uh, thank you for sharing this with us. And thank you for bringing your exhibit to St. Okay, Catharines. Well, thank you it's, so much. It's very I kind of you to, to share that. And it's wonderful, again, one more, one more you know, uh, comment to have Wendell Berry's concept being mm -hmm, embraced mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by people not just from this college but from this community and also outside mm -hmm, of that mm -hmm, right thank you right, so really much thank you so much so, okay, thank, thank you. you thank you